So far, we've basically been using graphs to help us understand and reason through a continuous function. Uh, one thing I want to do with you right now is look ahead to calculus, because there's a really tough concept in the early parts of calculus when you take calculus one that a lot of people struggle with, and hopefully we can make sense of it right now together a little bit, at least the beginnings of it, okay? And it helps answer the question, is there a way to show continuity algebraically? Right? Again, so far we've just looked at graphs and talked about it from that perspective, but can we show this algebraically? Uh, you probably realize the answer is yes. We need to do a little bit of review from something that you probably haven't thought too much about since maybe Algebra 1, the first. So one key thing here, the main thing here, absolute value. The absolute value of a difference. So for example, the absolute value of A minus B, remember that means the distance from a to B. Now, you might think, well, can't we just find the distance purely by subtracting? Well, sure, like if I took 5 minus 3, I get 2, and 2 is the distance from 5 to 3, right? But ideally, we'd like to also ask the reverse question. Um, what's the distance from 3 to 5? I can't just subtract 3 minus 5 because I get negative 2. I need a way to put it in terms of a positive because distance is always positive, and that's where the absolute value comes in. Because whether I write the absolute value of a minus b, or b minus a, these still represent the same thing as each other. There's still the distance from a to b. Now, of course, for the second one, I could say b to a, but you and I both agree that those mean the same thing. And we learned to take these and solve equations involving absolute value. And this will help us understand how to tackle continuity algebraically. So here's a simple absolute value equation. Okay? Solve the absolute value of x minus 3 equals 8. You kind of have to break this into its pieces and what it means. Remember, this means the distance from something to 3, right? So what we're saying is, whatever makes this equation true, it has a distance away from 3 equal to 8. So, I need to be 8 away from 3, and that will get me my x. A number line is super helpful. But remember, you can be 8 away this direction, or you could be 8 away this direction, which gives me two possible solutions. <clears throat> if I go 3 plus 8, I get 11. And if I go back 8, I get negative 5. Okay? And maybe you could have just played around and figured out that these two things work, because I think you kind of know how absolute value works and stuff to make 8. But this idea here is going to be an important one to make sense of this. Let's look at a slight variation on this same problem. The slight alteration I've made here is I've turned this into an inequality. So it's the same otherwise, but instead I'm not asking find the two specific numbers whose distance from 3 is exactly 8. If I'm saying the distance is less than 8, what we're saying is anything that's within 8 of 3 does that make sense? Anything that's within 8 of 3. So essentially, this negative 5 and 11 are important, but actually every number from negative 5 all the way to 11 has a distance from 3 that's within 8. So officially stating my solutions tell me that our x values I'm interested in is every number from negative 5 up to 11, and since we didn't include the equal to, then this also won't include equal to. But again, everything within that amount. This sets us up to understand how we can solve continuity algebraically. So now that we've seen an absolute value, if you have a less than right inequality, it's talking about being within a range of values. And that makes sense with our continuity thing, because if you remember, we talked about these two points approaching the actual output and letting them get closer and closer. Well, that gives us a range within those two points must be the actual output, right? So it goes hand in hand here. So here's a type of problem that we actually would uh, see to try to solve continuity algebraically or get the idea of continuity. If we have this function, I'm just telling you f of 5 is 82, so we have that, we know that output. How close must we make x to 5 so that this inequality is satisfied? And I set you up to understand this in the last example, so we didn't have to get all crazy about it. Remember, this is saying we're trying to make f of x within 0.1 of 82. So this is kind of a complex uh, 
thing with a lot of symbols going on. But really the main question we're asking is, how can I make f of x be within 0.1 of this output? How close do I need to make the input to 5 to make that happen? Well, to tackle this, the honest truth is the easiest way is to use technology. So, here is the same inequality, only I've actually put f of x, the function rule here, and f of 5 is 82. And if I use a computer algebra system to solve this, it'll tell me boop, 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 that x must be between this value and this value. And if you notice, these are 0 0.0018 away from 5. So the answer here is we should x needs to be made within 0 0.0018 of 5 in order to guarantee that we've squeezed those outputs within 0 0.1 of 82. So that 0.1 wasn't special. I could ask to be as close as I want to 82. You'll notice this is exactly identical here in part B, but we're saying f of x, we want it to be within 0.01 of 82. And again, we just set up this inequality by plugging the things in here, and we use uh, technology to solve this. This would tell me that x must be between this number and that number, and you'll notice it's pretty similar to the last solution. But instead of 0 0.0018, we have 0 0.0018. So essentially what this is telling us is we can inch closer and closer and closer and closer with the inputs to get as close as we want to that exact output. So again, take those red points and try to get them to align as close as I want to that actual output that we're looking for here. And that is the essence of continuity.